KPSI TV helps businesses have a bigger presence by making TV affordable. Beyond ads, biz brands can now have a channel presence with their content. We are the Netflix of biz brands. If you have a passionate message, the solution to a problem, a new book or product launch, and want to impact a new and expansive audience, have your audience say, I saw you on TV. PSI TV is proud to bring you another star, this time in the personal development niche. Rocky Romanella believes in leaving a place better than he found it. The work ethic that he has has facilitated his rise from unloading trailers at UPS to being the president of their supply chain and their residential solutions. Then he went on to be the CEO of a telecom company and Rocky believes there is no substitute for hard work. Now as a CEO and senior partner of 360 Management Services, Rocky is the sought after keynote speaker, media guest and leadership coach. Rocky, it's my honor to have you on with us today. Well, as well as mine. And this is great to be part of, I think, something that's going to just be fantastic for people to learn and develop from. So I'm honored to be part of the show. Awesome. Thank you so much again for being today. Now, Rocky, tighten the lug nuts. That's your book. Do you have to have it nearby? Yes, I do all over. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm advertising <laughs> it all over the place. <laughs> okay. Yes, so I see it right there on the shelf. Uh, I see it. I see it. I see it. There we go. Um, there we go. That's an interesting name for a leadership book, uh, Rocky. Now, while I do encourage the audience to get a copy, what would, what should they expect from that book? Well, I wrote the book with with three goals. One was to be educational, give you an opportunity to maybe learn some things along the way, maybe look at things in a different way. I always believe great leaders challenge their people not to stop at the first right answer. So, so I thought if I could put some of my skills and some of my knowledge and some of the things I learned into this book, maybe that would be some of the things that you'd learn that help you maybe to challenge you not to stop at the first right answer. I always, I also wanted to be the book, want the book to be entertaining, right? We work hard enough. Why not have a little bit of fun? So I wrote it in a story form and a third person by a person by the name of Joe Scaffone. I came up and with how Joe was, as I was growing and developing in my career, I never liked the feeling when I, someone brought me an idea and I would look at them and say, well, it's a good idea, but what if? And the but what if always seemed to turn them off a little bit. And so instead of saying, hey, maybe you should look at it differently or but what if, I would say, hey, do you think Joe Scaffone thinks that's a good idea? So that was my way of challenging them not to stop at the first right answer and have a little fun with it. So the book has a story in each chapter along with a, a lesson in each chapter. And finally, I wanted to create some aha moments where you would read the book or read a chapter and think about what you're working on currently or something that you may want to aspire to do. And you kind of tilt your head and say, "Uh aha, well, that's something I could use and maybe something that could help me along the way. So that was my goal to have an educational, entertaining book that created some aha moments. Hmm. But on the surface, Tighten the Lug Knots is a leadership book, but I got a very strong customer service excellence vibe from it. Are those two concepts related? Oh, absolutely. And if you think about it, so I think sometimes we think about customer service in the thought of, well, it's external customers. But really inside organizations, no matter how large or small, there's internal customers as well. And so your ability to work with and connect with your external customers are certainly very important because you're driving revenue, you're trying to understand your customers, you're trying to retain your customers. But the internal customers are just as important. Your ability to work with other functions inside your organization, your ability to train and develop people inside your organization is so important. And that becomes your internal customer. And I think once you can, once you kind of raise up your external customer and help them uh, grow their business and, and get their business to be more than they ever thought it could be. Well, the same wonderful things happen when you do that with the people in your care, the people in your organization. I never like to say people that you know work for me or an employee, there are people in our care. And so the, to the degree to which we can help raise them up and help them feel good about the things they're working on, those are internal customers become such an important part of our organization. So yes, even though I believe in balanced leadership, I also believe that you know, the customer, both internal and external, is such an important part of it. And I want to throw out there that if someone is working for an organization and they feel cared for and they see that they're 
having opportunities to grow. I think that. But certainly your people are not only safety internally, but safety for your customers. And so you want you you want to make sure that when you're making all your decisions that your customers, your people and your shareholders or stakeholders that are represented. So you so I simply say you want to think like a customer. You want your people to feel like valued individuals and you want to act like an owner in all the decisions that you make. And if you can keep that balance, you'll make some really good decisions. There's no doubt about it. And you'll be much more in balance. And so quickly, an example would be if someone brings me a new product or service, they may make a wonderful presentation and they'll, talk to, you know, they'll outline why it's an important product, where it fits in a portfolio, why we should do it. And of course, the CFO, he or she's pounding on a calculator explaining why at that price point with this number of sold units, we can make money. And before we go any further or make a decision, I would say, well, our, our people aren't represented in this decision. What's the training they need? How do they handle a service disconnect? Do they know why this is an important product? So that's basically the process of balanced leadership. You want, your, you want to think like a customer, have your people feel like valued individuals and act like an owner in all the decisions that you make. Hmm. Taking responsibility at the top, right? So, yeah. Rocky, tell us about, just a little bit about your 100 day plan. Well, I, I'm a firm believer that you, you need a roadmap and a vision of what you're trying to accomplish. And so whenever I would start a new job or whenever I would be tasked with a new responsibility or there's a change inside the organization, you know, we, we take that example of a new product. We have a new product, we have a new launch. I would lay things out in a 100 day plan and make sure that all three constituents are represented. So my example would be when I retired from UPS, you know, I took on the role as a CEO, as you said, in a telecom company, I laid out my first 100 day plan and presented it to the board. We were a publicly traded company. I presented my first 100 day plan and what I wanted to accomplish in that first 100 days. And interestingly enough, all three constituents were represented. You know, for example, the customers, who's our top customers, who's our uh, customers that just churned out. Why did they churn? Why did they leave us? And so I would reach out to those customers and based, based on different verticals that we had, the customers in those verticals. How about our people? I'd, I would try to visit our largest facilities, but also our smallest facilities. I would look at any employee relations index numbers that we had and find out how, you know, how do our people view us? You know, do they find value in working with us and for us and, and being part of our organization? And then, of course, you have the profitability numbers and understanding, you know, the, the different, you, you know, parts of that piece of it. And each Friday, I would sit there and I would say, okay, um, th at this point in the 100-day plan, I should have visited, you know, 36 customers. I should have visited, you know, 25 maybe, uh, or, you know, of our facilities. Here's where we should be from a profitability point of view, a revenue point of view, those kinds of things. And I, sometimes you find that you're skewed one way, you know, you like visiting your people. So you go there more, but you still got the customers. So it keeps me on track. And so the hundred day plan is laid out sort of as a kind of the roadmap to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. And as you start out your career, I would lay out a hundred day plan, you know, for the first hundred days in your new job, what are you trying to accomplish? What are the things that you're trying to do and what are, you know, and how, how are you doing at the end of that first hundred days? Well, it seems like every U.S. president, the focus is always on their first 100 days. So yeah, yeah that's a good example. Yes, that's a great point. That's a great example. So Rocky, you say leaders live, I'm quoting you now, leaders live their values and set the tone from the top. Rocky, what do you mean by that? Well, I think, I think it's all about, the first thing is you have to answer three key questions as a leader. The first question is, who am I? What do I stand for? And what are the things I won't compromise? And that's such an important, so who is Rocky Romanella? Who are you? What are the things that, because your value set the tone. And then you set the tone from the top in two ways. One, by your actions. So for example, you know, if I'm walking through a facility and safety is a core value and I see someone doing an unsafe act, even it may be a simple unsafe act, you know, they're walking past some papers on the floor that could be slippery. Well, if I don't say anything or I don't pick them up myself, I just silently sanction bad behavior. I can't do that. So I set the tone, whether it's, you know, uh, we're, we're going to have a place that we value diversity. We, we have an organization that lives our values. We believe in integrity. So I have to set that tone personally when people, when people see me, you know, doing, you know, walking about and, and doing my job. 
But the second way is most is also very important. Look, when you manage large organizations and large large uh, operations as I have in the past with big geographies, people realize that you're not going to get to every single one. And you know, if you have seventy thousand employees, you're not going to be able to talk to each one of them. But when you visit the facilities, you got to be you got to be visible. People got to see that you're that type of person that likes interaction because then they know that well. You know, he would be upset if he knew this was going on. He would be upset if this is a hostile work environment. He would be upset if, if my views and my values, you know, I'm not connecting. And so you set that tone when you walk around. But what you're going to get judged on, because people realize you, it's impossible for you to know everything. What do you do when the information's brought to you? Knowledge bears responsibility. So if I'm setting the tone that, you know, we, you know, we want, we want a work environment that people feel safe. We want a work environment that people know that they, va we value them. We don't view them as, we view them as part of the solution, not part of the problem. Well, when something's brought to me, I have to act upon it because if I don't, what I'm really saying is I'm not setting the tone for the top. That's really not as important to me. No, absolutely. So when things are brought to you, you have to, you have to handle them in an appropriate way, because if you don't, then you now set the tone that it's really not as important as we thought it was. So you set the tone by your actions and you set the tone by how you handle things that are brought to you and how you handle this concept of knowledge bears responsibility. So in other words, it's not just to do as I say, it's to do as I do. Well, it always it starts with you as the leader. By the way, the reason why leaders never leave their office, there's no problems in their office. What's the biggest problem they have? Oh, the picture may be crooked or, hey, I need some more pencils. No, there's no problems in your office. The problem, but so when you get out of that office and you start to walk around, you have to leave that office recognizing that if something is brought to me, I have to address it, right? I always just say, I could never be undercover boss. It would break my heart that nobody knew who you were, right? So, I mean, it's a great show. People love it. God bless them, who's ever on it. But I would never want to be that undercover boss that nobody knew who you were and that, and that they were, you know, they weren't, they, they were afraid to bring it. I want to be cheers. Everybody knows your name. Ah, okay. Well, you have done keynote speaking. You've authored a five-star book. You've been an executive in the C-suite. That's just some of the things that you've done. Uh, what is your favorite role, Rocky? Well, right now I had some great titles. I was very fortunate, right? But today I carry the greatest title of all time, grandpa. Ay, ay, ay. I love it. So, and, and you know, it's funny. People would say to me, oh, what are the grandkids going to call you? You know, I say, hey, when I walk in, if they smile, I'm a happy guy. They can call me whatever they want. They do call me grandpa. Of course, prior to this, I, I love, you know, hearing them call me dad. And, you know, when they would come home from college or whatever, and it's good night, dad, good night, dad. We had four children. It'd be great to hear them all. Of course, I do love being called Debbie Romanello's husband. So that's pretty cool. I do, uh, I do enjoy that very much as well. So those are probably my three favorite titles. Debbie's husband, uh, dad, and of course, now grandpa. Nice, nice. Rocky, before we wrap up, there's so much wealth. I mean, we could never pull it out of you in this short time. But is there any nugget, anything else you'd like to share with us before we go? So just two quick things, and I'll make I'll try to do them as quickly as I can. I got this Jersey just fast talking going here for you. How's that? So no, the first just, one just is don't I, worry about it. Just share it that we get it. All right. So so the first the first thing is I would say is those three questions that you know we just talked about. I would say that as a leader and as as a person, you have to answer those three questions. Who am I? What do I stand for? And number three is the most difficult. What won't I compromise? And you can see companies have the same three they have to answer. Who are we? What we stand for? One and two, most people could articulate, especially in a company setting. And if you think about companies that got themselves in trouble, there's posters all over the place, values, mission statements, strategies, all that stuff. But number three is what gets you in trouble, right? What won't you compromise? And so I think you need to clearly understand that as an individual as well. The second thing I would say to you is, and I have the honor and privilege always to speak to juniors and seniors in high school, juniors and seniors in college, and we'll go through this concept of legacy. And I always tell them, Think of the word you want someone to use at the end of your career. What's that word you want them to use to define you? And whatever that word is, for me, the word was thoughtful. Some people it's, you know, integrity. Some people is inquisitive. I would say if you think about that word and you kind of understand what that word is that you want people to describe you at the end of your career, you end up building a mosaic to that word throughout your career. Right. So if it's thoughtful, I want to think about things in a thoughtful way, how it impacts our customers, our people and our share owners. 
you know, even though you have to make difficult decisions and you may have to let somebody go, they're not a right fit in your organization. Do you do it in a thoughtful way? Do you do it in a caring way? So I would say, think about the words you want someone to use at the end of your career. And that becomes your brand. And then you start to build your brand promise and no different than a product. When we hear a jingle or we see it, we know exactly what it is. You start to build that brand for yourself as well. And just for the record, or is it, mine is trustworthy. I trustworthy. Have, there I, you go. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So no matter what happens, you want people to look, they may not agree with your decision or they may not understand it completely, but they trust you enough to follow you because they know what you do stems from an honest heart. So I think that that's, that's so important. And finally, look, if I hope the book brings joy to you, I hope the book gives you some opportunities to have some aha moments. Uh, I think there's some things in there that'll seem logical to you, but there's a lot of things in the book I tried to do from those experiences that I had that created a lot of aha moments for me. So I, I, I hope, as you said, when we first started, I believe that you know, a legacy is leaving things a little better than you found it. I'm hoping that when you put the book down, things are a little bit better for you than we started. Sweet. So how can people get access to the book or follow up and connect with you? So the book is, uh, I have a website, www.tightenthelugnuts.com, the title. Uh, I will put that in the end credits so that people won't make any mistakes on spelling or anything. So tightenthelugnuts.com. And then I also, uh, we're Amazon, fulfilled through Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. They do a great job, Amazon. And uh, of course, on my website, you can interact with me that way as well. And I answer questions. My email address is rockyromanella at gmail.com if you have a question, anything I can help with. And, uh, and there's also on the website, you'll see there's uh, over 125 podcasts. I'll, you know, I'll absolutely load this one up on my website as well. And it's a way for you to listen to, there's over 25 different leadership competencies I talk about through the different podcasts. So if there's one that you need, uh, having difficult conversations, succession planning, just two, for example, and maybe you want to know more about those. There's, there's a podcast interview I've done on those particular topics. So maybe that'll be helpful for you as well. So there's podcasts, there's also YouTube videos. So I tried to make it as interactive as I can, but tighten the lug nuts is a great way to get to me via that website. Fantastic. Rocky Romanella. It's been my absolute honor to have you on PSI TV today. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. And if you ever need anything for your audience, please don't hesitate to call. I certainly can help in any way I can. Perfect. Thank you, Rocky.